Morning ladies and gents. It's a beautiful day. We're in Sydney and we've got the new BMW R18 Roctane. This is the fifth full-time member of BMW's big bore cruiser platform. What do you think about it, Zane? What yeah? Think, what do you think? What do you hey? I don't know. The microphone's here if you want to do a bit of... It know, looks really tough, man. Anyway, get out of here. Um, look. It's distinguished by sort of stripped back styling. I don't want to say it's reminiscent of a certain other cruiser. It might rhyme with load sing. This could be the one that puts the R18 into the cultural zeitgeist. It's pretty, it's got bags, it's got big bars, the sun's out. The stage is sort of set for a bike like this today. So let's stop mucking around. Let's go for a ride. the R18 before but it's been a while and I was quickly reminded of just how much motorcycle we've got here it is a big and commanding thing and I still got a bit of a shock from that boxer jolt on startup in fact you can even feel it at this kind of speed that lateral feeling from that big chunk of boxer engine. It's the same 1.8 litre, 802 cc boxer as all the other R18s, 67 kilowatts of power and a glorious 158 newton metres of torque. Doesn't lack any go, but it is one big almighty machine. And I think it's in its prettiest configuration here with the Roctane. You can have any colour as long as it's matte or black. In all cases, the big boxer, as they call it, is murdered out black. Colour match panniers and these big wide bars. And as a bit of a nod to some of the earliest BMWs, you'll see the Speedo and Taco situation is built in to the round headlight unit. Floorboards, a heel toe shifter, very neutral, upright, big days in the saddle kind of ergonomics. It's been a while since I've been on the R18, but look, I don't think it's had the immediate hit into the culture that perhaps some ex expected, but as BMW were telling me last night, when it comes to things like cruisers, these things take time. They need to embed themselves into the cultural zeitgeist. They need to build their cool, they need to build their reputation. There are criticisms to be made about this platform. One thing that's hard to criticise is the undeniable BMW build quality that's made its way into this bike. The level of care and attention. The rock and roll motifs they keep using. If you're not aware, that's their rider modes. Rock and roll and rain. They're making a serious effort to make the R18 cool. Of course, the elephant in the room being Harley Davidson. They're trading on a lot of heritage, a lot of lineage in the cruiser space. And it mustn't be an easy endeavor to break into that market, you know. BMW have had cruisers before, but not nearly to this kind of volume. This is their, really, I think it's fair to say, their first serious go at a big ball cruiser. I wanted to give you a bit of a closer look at the spec. You got three colorways. You got this murdered out black version, possibly the most appealing to me. And you've also got these rather restrained matte colorings. Anyway, I think as far as I can tell all of these models we have on test here are the Highline edition. So that's a bit of a higher spec variant. 
What that gives you is things like adaptive headlights, uh, heated grips, tire pressure monitoring, among other things. But perhaps the most important is it's got a reverse gear. And I tell you what, I just tried to reverse it into this position over here and it took just about everything I had. I ended up using the reverse gear. So I'm gonna have a bit more of a think about this bike and put some more Ks on it. But so far, I have to say, this might be the R18 in its best application so far. It's certainly the most thrilling iteration I've ridden so far for me. So let's get into it. I know Matty Heyman behind the camera is dying for a piss, aren't you, Matty? Sure am. <laughs> Rock and roll. <laughs> certainly a fair bit of bike to pull up. Those front brakes are working pretty hard. But we're getting away with it. What I do really like is the way this bike's suspended. It's quite smooth and graceful in the way it operates. It's such a long and low sort of thing and yet they've managed to make that rear end quite compliant. But yeah, just how low to the ground it is. That setup being preload adjustable, I should add. This may be the R18 at its best in this format. The way it's stripped back, it just so, puts such focus and emphasis on what is the centerpiece of this platform, let's be honest. That stonking great boxer engine underneath me. Look at that thing. And when you're left to just ride that motor, you've got your panniers to chuck your gear in, you've got the wind right in your face like a real cruiser, you've got the tech stuff you want, like cruise control and heated grips, but none of it's in your way. I think BMW showed pretty good restraint in that way. Cruiser guys aren't necessarily like adventure bike riders, you know. Not in all cases, but in most, you know, I think cruisers just want to be in the wind. They want it to be stripped back to that really basic archetype of what motorcycling is. And you know, I, uh, I often fall into that camp myself. Tech's great as long as it works with you and not against you. This one does have traction control, but nothing fancy like a six axis IMU. There would be no point. Three rider modes, it's all you need. And the R18 didn't immediately grab me, I'll be honest. First few I rode, didn't have that lightning. I was hoping for. But for whatever reason it is, this one seems to be grabbing me. It's funny how things as simple as ergonomics <laughs> can change the way you feel about a motorcycle. Let's go. Mr. Roland Stocker, it's a pleasure to have you over from Munich. It's my pleasure it's to be to here. Fair to say you've had a little bit to do with the R18. Can well, you let us know yeah. a little bit about your um, involvement? Yes, uh, I'm a project manager of the R18 and before of the R90 project, so what we call the heritage world. So I became a project manager for the R90 like 10 years ago. And then we found out with the R90 and the success of the R90, the world sees BMW also in this way mm -hmm. and we got the credibility let's say so we said okay now let's continue this path right. and so we had a look not just sports bikes and adventure no. right yeah. right yeah. because the cruiser market is a huge market and of course uh, we also happy if we get a share of it and we do have a long history like 100 years mm -hmm. and uh, we've done so many beautiful motorcycles also 
like in the 30s. So we found this R5 from 1936 and mm. said, if we could transport this concept into today's world, this would yeah. be great. And so we started with this idea to do a cruiser. And we are super yeah. happy now with the fifth mm. member of our family, which is the R18 Roctane. This is, uh, let's say, the, the, the smallest touring bike out of this family because it has these cases but it does not have a big screen or front fairing so it's still easy to handle mm. but it has also some touring capabilities yes. with the cases and we have these floorboards mm. and what we also do have is a 21 inch wheel and yeah. a big benefit of this 21 inch wheel and the 18 inch wheel is there's a little bit more of leaning angle and this little bit more of leaning angle you might have uh, recognized or realized today when we rode it makes a, such a big difference mm. and big so sportier. yeah mm. big sportier mm. and it has a very big uh, part of our history inside which is the headlamp yeah. with this integrated speedo yeah. that we used to have in the past yeah so we are very happy to again to uh, create a motorcycle which has a lot of bmw inside mm. one of the big challenges i know for bmw in going into this big motor cruiser segment is of course one feature of cruisers is foot forward controls and obviously you need to find a way around that with the big cylinders coming out the side. How did you navigate that? Was that a big, a lot of thought went into how to make that work? It's a, it's a very good question because uh, we, of course, uh, when we started this project, we, we knew about the importance of feed forward. Mm. At the same time, we said, well, we're talking about our DNA. We're talking about the history of BMW, which is very strong related to the boxer engine. And so we decided to create our own ergonomics, which is cool, which is relaxed, but it's not necessarily a feed forward ergonomics. Yeah. And also for the riding, we found out for a, a a safe riding and a super in riding it's also easier with this kind of ergonomics to do it so we always said like last night before you build a bike you have to build a bike mm, yeah so what we did is we built a prototype a real runner and then we figured out what's the best compromise between the stance and the riding and so we came up with this ergonomics with this uh, stance and also with this uh, leaning angle and there we saw also the seat height, very important point. And so we came out with all these uh, dimensions out of our first prototype test bike. And then we let all the people ride who have an opinion. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then we nailed it. <laughs> yeah. So it's probably the first time you've ridden in Australia significantly, right? Oh, yeah. What do you think? Oh, yeah. I Those love Australia. are a little Australia. bit scary though at times, aren't they? A few bumps. Oh, well, I love these kind of roads. I mean, a motorcycle gives you so much uh, touch points to the ground, to the surface, to the climate, to everything. Yeah, yeah. And I really enjoyed it here. Yeah. And especially the scenery and then these windy little roads and so less traffic. This road is great. Oh, yeah, there was not much out there, yeah. was there? Yeah, we had a good ride. And yeah, we've been like, uh, you see this line up so many bikes together. Yeah. If you would do it in Europe, you would get lost like five yeah. Ks after you started. Yeah. <laughs> I guess we take it for granted in Australia, but we are kind of lucky to be able to do oh, that. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, enough talk. I reckon we should go back the way we came, maybe a bit faster. Yeah, I appreciate this. I, I would like, I mean, on one side, I like cruising. Mm. On the other side, because the motorcycle can't do it, I like also going a little bit faster. <laughs> <laughs> <You're laughs> so, <laughs> let's get into it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Rock and roll. Now, this is one hell of a road. The road so far had been pretty beaten up by the floods not too long ago. The suspension only just managing some of the potholes. But this feels like a billiard table. There really is something about it, you know. A warm day, hot motorcycle, and nothing to do but ride. It's just something I keep coming back to. It's the only thing that really does it for me at the end of the day. Whether you're on your own or with your mates, it doesn't even matter what kind of motorcycle it is. 
it's a bit of a reset blowing out the cobwebs that I didn't know I needed till right now but I feel good